While the only essential tools are a sewing machine, thread, and the right needles, there are a number of other tools and supplies that make it far easier to sew with stretchy knit fabrics. Find out what they are in this video. Hi, I'm Adrienne from Sew PDF. I've been sewing for 25 years, and for the last five years, I've been designing and marketing PDF sewing patterns. My goal is to make sewing easy and fun. So as I said, the only real essential tools for working with knit fabrics are a sewing machine, thread, and the right needles. Even a serger, while helpful, is not necessary to sew with knit fabrics. Now I prefer to use stretch needles for most of my knit sewing. Here are some stretch needles and some jersey needles. These are the two main kinds that are used to sew knit fabrics. Jersey needles are also known as ballpoint needles. Now, both of these needle types can sew most knit fabrics with no issues. However, on either end, they both have their own purposes that the other one doesn't work very well for. Ballpoint or jersey needles work better than stretch needles for sewing looser weave knit fabrics, such as a sweater knit. They also work better for fabrics that don't have spandex in it, such as an interlock jersey, or a waffle knit with no spandex, those types of fabrics work better with a ballpoint or jersey needle. A stretch needle, on the other hand, works best for fabrics with a high spandex content. They are especially helpful for high stretch fabrics, such as athletic knits, swim knit, uh, really stretchy jerseys like a polyester jersey or a bamboo jersey. Most of these types of fabrics will not sew well with a ballpoint or jersey needle. You'll end up with skipped stitches. So since I tend to work more with knits that have spandex in them, I typically use stretch needles for nearly all of my knit sewing, as both types do work for the in-between type fabrics. The more structured knits, such as a cotton jersey or a cotton French terry with some spandex in it, will work with either needle type. There are also stretch twin needles, which are used for hemming knits a lot of the time. They are not necessary though. I actually prefer to hem my knits with some other stitch types and a single needle. So as I said, the correct needles are really the only necessary tool. The other tools I'm gonna to go over now are helpful, especially in specific scenarios. I won't be going over how to use these tools in detail in this video, but I will be covering that in other videos. So first up, we've got a walking foot or a knit foot. Neither of these are 100% necessary, but depending on your machine, it may be extremely helpful. I actually have two Janome sewing machines and one of them sews great with just a regular presser foot. The other one, if I don't use a walking foot, then my fabric does get a little stretched out of shape. You can usually mitigate the stretching by lowering the presser foot pressure on your sewing machine and you can remove a lot of the waviness with a good steam press after sewing. For these reasons, I wouldn't say that a knit foot or a walking foot is 100% necessary but they do often help. If you'd like to know more about a walking foot or a knit foot and how they work, stay tuned to the end for a link to a video that goes over this in detail. Something that I also find helpful when sewing knits on a regular sewing machine is maxi lock stretch thread. This is intended to be used in the loopers of a serger, but I like to use this in a bobbin on a regular sewing machine. So this is called wash away tape. And if you're a quilter, you may be familiar with it. It's often called quilter's tape as well. So what you're going to do with this is it's a sticky tape. So you're going to put the sticky side down. Cut it. Peel off the backing. And stick your seam together. This is really handy with knit fabrics that tend to slip a lot, like swim fabrics. Polyester jersey is often very slippery. Um, so this just helps your seam stay together while you're sewing it in the sections where you've already removed your pins or clips as you're sewing. It's also really helpful for stabilizing the seam as you sew it. Um, for example, if you used it for a hem, like if you folded your hem and stuck it to the fabric with, with the wash away tape. Since the tape doesn't stretch, it if you sew right through it while you're sewing, then it will prevent your fabric from stretching while you sew it, which is extremely helpful with knit fabrics. And then it will wash away 
first time you wash the garment and your, your seam will be stretchy again. So speaking of stabilizing, there will be some times that you'll need to stabilize your fabric to prevent it from stretching even more than with a wash away tape. So you may need a fusible interfacing. So this is a light fusible interfacing. This is a heavy fusible interfacing. This would often be used to stabilize areas where you're going to place a button or snaps or grommets, uh, things like that will pop out of the fabric if they stretch after you've placed them. Um, so you need to permanently stabilize that area. So you'll need to iron some fusible interfacing onto the fabric to keep that area from stretching. I hope that this overview of supplies has been helpful. And if you'd like more information on how to actually sew with knits, please check out some of the links in the description of this video. Or you can stay tuned for a video that is specifically about sewing machine settings for sewing with knit fabrics, including more information about a walking foot or a knit foot. Thank you for watching and I hope you check out more of our videos.